Alrighty, we're just going to get started. Um, it's just before three o'clock, but I'll start now anyways. Um, so welcome to the session. This is um, Choosing a Microphone for Your Needs uh, with Marcus Marr. Um, we are going to be uh, sh starting out by showing a video uh, of Marcus's presentation. He's joining us by phone live, and he'll be able to answer some questions um, at the end of the presentation. Uh, or do you want questions uh, throughout, Marcus? Should I be pausing the video? Well, you know, if you don't mind, if it if it makes sense, I would say um, maybe if the questions are brief, we could just do it at the end of each of the segments. Might be cool. Sure. Okay. Sounds good. So uh, I'll be pausing the video and uh, offering an opportunity for folks to ask questions. You can send questions in anytime during the chat uh, function or use the raise hand button and I will enable your microphone uh, and allow you to speak. And um, yeah, so without further ado, um, I'll just say I, I, I think you introduced yourself a little bit, Marcus, in the video, but yeah. Marcus is a longtime audio uh, professional. He's the proprietor of uh, Mars Music and a font of uh, amazing information about podcasting and everything audio. So this is a real treat for us to have Marcus presenting. And um, he's always available at uh, Mars Music and his expertise is there. But uh, thanks for doing this, Marcus. I really appreciate it. No, no it's very kind. My pleasure. Anytime. Thank you. Great. OK, so. We'll get into watching the video now, and uh, like I said, use the chat or raise hand button if you have a question. Hi there, and thanks for joining me today. My name is Marcus Marr, and I'm from Mars Music in Peterborough. And today, I'm really thrilled to be able to chat with you about a topic that I can actually chat endlessly about, which is choosing the right microphone whether it's for instrumental recording, whether it's for uh, wireless uh, performances, uh, or in this case, podcasting. Choosing the right microphone to me. Okay, let's continue. That might be a very different microphone, whether it's for instrumental recording, whether it's for uh, wireless uh, performances, uh, or in this case, podcasting, choosing the right microphone to me is kind of akin to choosing the right vehicle. If you want to go for a leisurely drive on a beautiful uh, sunny afternoon, that might be a very different vehicle than if your best friend asks you to help them uh, move into a new apartment. And in the same way, choosing the right microphone really depends on the, uh, the purpose. What is it that you're trying to do? What is it that you're trying to capture uh, with the microphone? Also, uh, what is a microphone? Sometimes it's tempting to throw around terms, even if we don't know exactly what they are. Uh, but I believe, even without getting too technical, that uh, getting to understand what a microphone is is really an, an empowering and an important thing. And, you know, the technology isn't actually as mysterious as we might think. Uh, microphones have been around for uh, well over a hundred years. So I think we should be able to understand them, and by understanding them, we'll be able to pick the best microphone for our needs. Having said that, above all, it really comes down to still preferences and tastes. Sometimes people get particularly obsessed with one microphone, you know, because they've seen other people using it, or a friend of a friend told them this is the only microphone to use. Uh, I don't think it's like that. There are uh, literally dozens upon dozens of excellent microphones uh, on the market at a whole bunch of different price ranges and a good microphone will never make up for poor content but nevertheless if you have interesting content it's great to choose the right microphone you know and to really put that kind of level of, of forethought and excellence into all parts of it so before I talk about what a microphone is, uh, let's talk about some of the common factors that influence the quality of a recording. So generally speaking, for any recording, uh, I would say it's things such as room. Well, the room I'm in. Uh, I'm coming to you from an uh, uh, indoor sunny, in, uh, sunny indoor day in Warsaw, and uh, we're relatively close to the street, so perhaps you'll hear some street noise. We're currently recording this intentionally using my cell phone uh, with the screen facing camera and uh, I'm probably about two, two and a half feet away. So you will hear the room 
quite intentionally uh, as I'm recording this. Uh, maybe you'll hear, you know, uh, the water pump coming on or all kinds of other background noise. So the room, the environment that we're in, uh, definitely influences the sound quality of the recording. It's also very difficult from a technical level to remove the sound of the room from a recording, but that's another potential seminar. So we have the room, that's one factor. Uh, number two, I would say instrument or sound source. So even though this isn't music, but the instrument in this case would be my voice. From my very posture to the amount of projection that I'm using and then, you know, sort of microphone technique, if you will, if I'm kind of talking like this and not, that's really not going to make a compelling sounding recording. If I open my mouth wider, if I kind of have more of a smile on my uh, face, and if I'm not even just talking into the microphone, but I kind of envision almost projecting past the microphone, well, that's going to give me, that's going to give my instrument a uh, uh, the potential to sound as good as it can, uh, along with instrument. So we have room, we have instrument. Then I would say performance is another aspect. So maybe I've you know, I've got a, a voice like James Earl Jones, you know, which I don't, uh, who voiced the original Darth Vader. And his voice just sounds phenomenal, frankly, with almost any microphone. But it's because he also knows how to deliver, how to give a performance. And so to me, to make the best out of your instrument, your voice, you really want to deliver uh, the right kind of performance. If you can, again, use a, a good amount of air as you're talking. Uh, really talk into the microphone. You know, don't talk too fast, don't talk too slow, and, uh, you know, really just think about the right kind of delivery style. And that's something that you have to work on. Uh, quite frankly, there are lots of times when I just stop recording about halfway through something and I think, oh man, I, I, I got to wake up. You know, I have to kind of get up. I have to shake off the, uh, uh, the tiredness or the lethargy of maybe sitting too long in one spot and trying to do something. So we have room, we have instrument, we have performance, and then we come to the microphone. And the microphone it can only do uh, what it can do uh, based on the restrictions of those other factors. If the room is just not the right room, the best sounding microphone won't have an easy time of it. If the instrument, if the voice really isn't up to it, wow, that's another challenge for the microphone. Because really, when you think about it, the more accurate, the more detailed the microphone might be, in some cases, that could actually be a drawback. And then if the performance isn't that good, think about it this way. You're, you're listening to a speaker that you really want to listen to on a topic that you're very passionate about. Now, uh, even if the recording was a bit scratchy, you might not love it, but you might be willing to listen to it. But if you had something very dull, something really not interesting or inspiring at all, but it was recorded with a $10,000 uh, studio microphone, you'd be like, yeah, who cares, but I'm not interested. So we have a lot of different factors. And today we're going to talk about the right kind of microphone, finding that for your voice, for your room, for your instrument, for your performance, and without having to spend $10,000, or in fact, even a, not even close to that, let's come up with something that's going to work. My recommendation is to that invest as much as you reasonably can or have to in having a good microphone. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, going hiking with the right kind of boots or, you know, upgrading your bicycle in the right kind of way for going on a long ride. Uh, it's good to have a good piece of equipment to get familiar with using it. And then you'll find that your results will only improve as you grow into it. So let's, uh, pause for a moment. If there are any questions um, that have come up, maybe about, you know, room, instrument, performance, uh, let's hold off on the microphone questions. But uh, one of the things I often get asked about is sound treatment. So some folks like this kind of stuff as a quick side note, in terms of what does it do, I'll use a couple of pieces as I'm talking here, and I'll layer them, I'll put them side by side. Uh, I will let you decide for yourself based on the sound, uh, what exactly does a little bit of phone do. But let's have a quick break and then we'll really get into what is a microphone.
Great. So does anyone have any questions? Uh, you can use the uh, chat feature to type a question in or uh, use the raise hand button and I can enable your microphone. Um, I'll just ask you, Marcus, um, do you, uh, do you have any suggestions on like what, how can you tell whether a room is going to be a good uh, recording environment? Um, are, are there any defining features of, of what makes a good recording space? Well, you know, it's a, that's a phenomenal and super difficult question, but generally speaking is that, you know, uh, go into your bathroom and talk in that room and that's definitely not a good space right uh, go into an empty garage and you'll find that that's not a good space because what will happen is they're very lively and rooms that have all hard surfaces typically are not good recording spaces uh, on average if you walk through a bookstore with a lot of shelves uh, you'll find that actually is not a bad sounding room because you have all these books all these um things breaking up the sound waves, scattering the sound waves, then you put a nice carpet in and it'll sound good. So long story short, rooms that are all hard surfaces that are kind of cube shaped or, you know, um, lots of opposing surfaces, not good. If you have a living room with a lot of upholstery on the furniture or take a bedroom, open up the closet, uh, flip up the mattress against the wall, that would be a quick way to make a, a better recording room. The final thing I'll say is, Lots of thin sound treatment makes for an awful room. It's one of the biggest mistakes that I see that I have to help people with uh, because in order to make a room sound good, we wanted to, the sound treatment to affect as many of the frequencies as possible and thin sound treatment, rule of thumb, only affects high frequencies. So what a lot of people think is a good room is just a dull sounding room and we don't want that either. Hmm. So, so what do you mean by thin uh, sound treatment? Oh, you know, for example, in the old days, uh, showing my age, people used to go around collecting uh, egg crates, thinking they could put right. these egg crates on the on the walls, or, you know, carpet on the walls or thin material or, you know, two inch foam. All of that just makes the room sound slightly dull. But again, it's actually uneven. It'd be like the equivalent of having a steak burned on the outside and raw on the inside. Not not good, typically. Hmm. Oh, that's interesting. So, uh, not a lot of opposing surfaces, so square rooms are bad generally. Um, yeah. Not a lot of reflective surfaces kind of thing, like as, as much soft material as possible. Well, you know, and, and kind of a balance, right? So if you have, let's say, if you had a, you know, let's say a, a medium-sized room, you know, that has a, a sofa in it, and uh, you know, then you slapped up a mattress on the wall and you had some heavy curtains, that would probably sound reasonably natural. Hmm. Uh, or, and of course, and if you talk about an isolation room, you know, um, like a total sound booth where it's totally quiet, uh, right? But then again, the key is that the sound treatment tends to be, they'll have bass traps, they'll have something on the ceiling, they'll have stuff on the walls, you know, in, in different dimensions and thicknesses. Because what will happen is thicker sound treatment will affect frequencies above it, thin sound treatment. Uh, will only affect higher frequencies, but the lower frequencies treat it like it's not there. So you'll notice me talking through the foam didn't really change the sound much at all. No, not too much, but I, I guess it would make a difference for some of the kind of frequencies that would kind of rattle around corners kind of thing. Yeah, right pos you know, possibly, but this is, you know, again, where the, the density and the air gaps and the quality of material, it does make mm. a difference. Final quick tip, you'd be better off using, you know, making a frame and covering it in old towels than you would be in uh, two inches of foam. Ah, typically. gotcha. Yeah. All right. Any, any other questions before we move on to the next section of what is a microphone? Um, not seeing any, and we'll have a chance to return to some of this and ask more questions at the end as well. So uh, oh, perfect. let's get into what is a microphone? Okay, let's continue. So what is a microphone? And pardon me for having to reach and, and look away sometimes as we do this. So this is a microphone and there are lots of different microphones, but that doesn't really answer the question. So I'm gonna get a little bit technical here, but just enough for us to understand what a microphone actually is. So a microphone is a transducer. So that sounds a little bit mysterious uh, 
uh, if you haven't been in physics class for a little while. But a transducer uh, is something that converts energy from one form into another. So what is a microphone? Well, a microphone is a transducer that converts acoustic energy into another form of energy, which in this case is electrical energy. That's right. So a microphone is a transducer that converts acoustic energy into electrical energy. Okay. And how do they do this? Well, microphones rely on a diaphragm. Uh, in order to convert the sound waves into electrical energy. So meaning, so this here, well, we don't actually even see the microphone. The microphone is actually inside this. There's a diaphragm inside this particular enclosure that is actually the microphone. So let's continue. So we're going to talk about two of the most common types of microphones and for podcasting needs generally speaking you might hear people talk about dynamic microphones and condenser microphones uh, those would be the two most common normal types of microphones uh, that would be suitable for podcasting for voice recording and reproduction so dynamic and condenser so this kind of microphone, which happens to be a USB microphone, we'll talk about that too, uh, this happens to be a condenser microphone. But we're going to talk about the dynamic microphones first. If you've ever been to a live sound event, uh, let's say where there are singers in a rock band or whatever, or even if you've ever watched boxing, you'll see a microphone come down on a, a cable typically, or in many other things, just maybe somebody speaking at a public address situation or at a, a wedding or who knows what. So the typical kind of handheld uh, vocal microphone that you will see, uh, you know, it's almost shaped like a bit of an ice cream cone and you can hold it in your hand. Those are almost always dynamic microphones. So just the fact that I can hold that microphone in my hand generally already gives us a clue that this type of microphone must be relatively uh, rugged. Studio type microphones, whether they're USB or not, uh, these really aren't meant to be handheld uh, because they're, they tend to be, the diaphragm tends to be a lot more fragile. So what is a dynamic microphone? <clears throat> Just imagine for a moment a speaker. If you've ever, you know, taken apart a speaker or seen, you know, the speaker cone that actually is giving you the sound, a dynamic microphone is kind of like a miniature speaker, but doing the reverse job, where the speaker is essentially taking the electrical signals and converting them back into acoustic energy so we can hear it, kind of the same as headphones, same kind of idea. But the dynamic microphone is like the reverse of that. It's similar to a small speaker, but instead of reproducing sound from electrical signals, basically imagine there's a little tiny speaker inside of that uh, microphone body, and it is converting the sound uh, waves into electrical energy. So, let me give a little bit of technical jargon, and this is from uh, the good folks at Neumann, a German microphone company known for their very, very high-end condenser microphones. So, a dynamic microphone, there is a coil, and it's glued to a membrane, and there is a magnet surrounding this coil. So imagine a coil on the back of a membrane, and when sound waves hit the microphone, the membrane moves to the rhythm of the sound waves and the coil that's attached moves along with it. And this relative movement of the coil within the st otherwise stationary magnetic gap, again, we've got the membrane, we've got the coil, we've got the magnet, and there's a small voltage that gets introduced then as a result of this. And now, we have a microphone. Again, it's a device that converts sound into an electrical signal. And there's that word again, that's a, a transducer. So if you kind of picture that in your mind's eye, or maybe I'll put a picture in. So what is good 
about a dynamic microphone, again, because they can typically be handheld or they can be on a stand, they tend to be relatively uh, rugged, so you shouldn't really drop any microphone, and I, I guess uh, if we think about it that way. But if you had to drop a microphone, a dynamic microphone, uh, because it tends to be less inherently fragile, that would be the one that can survive a little bit of rougher treatment. Also, if you happen to have very, very loud sound levels, a dynamic microphone can typically handle those extremely well also. They tend to be directional, so you would hear sometimes omnidirectional or unidirectional. Uh, so most of these dynamic microphones are unidirectional. So that would mean that they pick up basically from one side. If you imagine kind of the ice cream cone shaped one, you've got the grill on top, and we'll just pretend here, but you're going to be talking into it this way. And typically with a dynamic mic, because you can imagine there's like a little mini speaker set inside that chassis. Well, if you're supposed to be here, Right? If, you, if you're off that microphone quite a bit, you're not going to get very much to be picked up by that dynamic microphone. So you have to have really good microphone technique on a dynamic mic, but you will be rewarded with picking up relatively little of the room. If you went into, let's say, Trent Radio, uh, into the, the on-air rooms, they'll tend to have pretty nice dynamic microphones, but you've got to be pretty much right on that microphone. But if you turn your head away, that microphone basically won't hear you at all or very little. So the advantage of that is that it's not going to pick up as much of the idiosyncrasies of the room. It won't pick up as many of the reflections or other kind of uh, background noises. And by strategically imagining, okay, this is where the business end of the microphone is and other areas, even off to the side, the microphone is not picking up so much, uh, we can create the illusion of a room that sounds better than it does on average by turning the microphone strategically. And this is again where using your ears really comes in importantly. Have on your headphones, put on the microphone, uh, record something in one room or one part of the room, maybe be in the corner, face the back of the microphone towards the corner, aim the back of the microphone towards the computer or laptop. Maybe that'll eliminate a lot of the noise, a lot of the ambient undesirable background noise uh, in the room. So dynamic microphones, will work uh, with almost anything because the other nice thing with them too is they don't require a thing called phantom power and we'll talk about that when we get into condenser microphones more but with the right kind of adapter a dynamic microphone uh, you could plug it into a guitar amp you could plug it into a portable recording device uh, you could plug it into an audio interface so they're quite versatile they're not the most detailed microphones in the world, but if you put it right up close to your face and uh, if you have good microphone technique, they tend to be an excellent, rugged, and affordable way to get into the realm of voice recording. So let's take a little break, and if there is a question or two about dynamic microphones, I will do my best to answer. Great. Well, thanks for that uh, rundown on dynamic microphones. Um, are there any questions from, from the audience? Just a reminder, if you want your uh, microphone or your ability to, to talk through the microphone turned on, just use the raise hand button um, within Zoom and uh, I'll be able to turn your uh, ability to speak on. Um, Marcus, so I used to use a um, uh, a field recorder as my like USB microphone when I was uh, uh, back before I had this monstrosity in front of me. Um, so that would have been using a dynamic microphone, right? Um, it, it was on like a Zoom field recorder. Uh, fantastic question. Uh, so a Zoom field recorder will actually have uh, built-in uh, condenser microphones. Oh, interesting. In fact, almost any of the field records, so, right, so Tascam, uh, Zoom, typically it's a condenser microphone. Oh, I, so, there's sorry, a, go ahead. And, and typically they're what are, 
So if you've seen like the clip-on or lapel mics that people have, mini-sized headset microphones, those are oddly enough a form of condenser microphone as well, but actually a slightly different kind than the one we're looking at. And that's also, when you look at the photo, what is a condenser microphone? Uh, what we're seeing is kind of what's called a, a true condenser microphone or kind of one of the larger type ones you'll see in a broadcast or voiceover or music studio. So that's a excellent question, but yeah, they are, um, they are small, 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 small um, condenser microphones. Oh, interesting. I just would have thought, um, like you were saying that dynamic microphones are more rugged. I, I would have thought a field recorder would, would use that option, but um, I guess you'll probably talk about it in, uh, in this next section about why uh, condenser microphones might be, might make more sense for that circumstance. Well, I mean, a little bit, but yeah, it's a good question because what you've pointed out is, and see, this is where this is such a huge uh, rabbit hole. And, uh, you know, you've certainly given me more food for thought about, you know, this would be another great topic to have. <laughs> but yeah, basically, with condenser microphones, there are different types. And again, there would be like a true condenser or back electret condenser, which is kind of what, what the smaller ones are. Or, you know, there are dynamic microphones. There are also ribbon microphones that are a form of dynamic microphones. But again, they're not that common. But again, if we've been doing this in the 50s, we would have talked about a ribbon mic. And a ribbon mic will have a super thin ribbon as the diaphragm, about as thin as two hairs. Now, they're very fragile. So yeah, always there's always more to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. Um, any questions from the audience before we go on? Any any kind of question, whether there's like uh, terms that you're not familiar with that you want clarified, or if if there's any ideas uh, or questions about your own kind of setup as well. Um, seeing none, and feel free to type them into the chat as the video is playing as well. But uh, seeing none, we'll just carry on and um, with what is a condenser microphone? Perfect. And let's talk about condenser microphones. Well, what is a condenser microphone? Well, um, these two are condenser microphones. And then the crazy part is uh, between the two of them, I've got a whole bunch of them because the Zoom H1 here, which we'll talk more about, actually has two condenser microphone capsules. And I'm trying to look inside the AKG Lyra, and this has got four condenser microphone capsules. So that's not typical, by the way. Usually microphones will have uh, one capsule and that's what they do. And uh, but when, they, when it comes to USB devices, because they try to do different things, different patterns, uh, a lot of USB devices will actually have more than one capsule, but they will be smaller capsules than on a microphone. A condenser microphone this size normally would have a capsule that's about the size of a toonie or a loony or something in that kind of size. Uh, I can assure you the four capsules inside here or here, well, uh, at best the size of a dime and realistically even smaller. So with dynamic microphones, we don't really talk about the size of the capsule or diaphragm very much with condenser microphones. So not only do we want to find out is uh, what is a condenser microphone? But the number two is, does the size of the diaphragm matter? Well, yes, it does. Should I get a small diaphragm? Should I get a large diaphragm? And again, a large diaphragm would be about the size of a loony or toony. Uh, a small diaphragm, typically maybe the size of a nickel or dime or potentially even quite a bit smaller than that. But let's find out what a condenser microphone is compared to the dynamic microphone that we talked about. Uh, you'll have to pardon me, I don't want to screw this up completely, so I'm going to read a bunch of this because uh, uh, I don't want to confuse you by giving wrong information. So, a condenser microphone uh, starts off with a thin, very thin uh, membrane in close proximity to a solid metal plate. So when I say thin membrane, so again, you think of the dynamic mic, that's like a miniature speaker. When you think of uh, a condenser microphone, I kind of think of, you know, like saran wrap or my eardrum or something else. We're talking uh, very, very thin. You know, the kind of thinness that you talk about in terms of human hairs, uh, kind of thin. And so the membrane or diaphragm as it's also sometimes called, 
uh, must be electrically conductive on its surface. Wow, that sounds complicated. But basically, so the actual surface of this thin membrane or diaphragm, that would be maybe the size in a large diaphragm microphone of a loony or toony, uh, will now be gold sputtered. Yep, that's right. And so we would have, let's say, a very, very thin piece of mylar that has been sputtered with gold. And uh, so that is now quite a different construction method already. And again, and this is in close proximity to a solid metal plate. So this is already way more uh, complicated. And we're not even close to the way uh, of being there yet. So when sound waves hit the diaphragm, uh, it moves back and forth relative to the solid metal plate. This is really detailed. So in other words, the distance between the two plates changes. And as a result, the capacitance changes to the rhythm of the sound waves. And we are now well on our way to converting the sound into an electrical signal. So what happens though, because this capsule uh, is so kind of uh, fragile and uh, there's almost no current being generated because there's so little uh, energy there, uh, it essentially has to be uh, boosted. It needs a converter inside, basically a circuit. And this is where, this is why we're talking about this. So uh, we need more to make the sound that's being converted uh, from this super thin diaphragm. To get that into the real world, we need more. So, so what happened is condenser microphones, unlike dynamic microphones, dynamic microphones are completely passive. You can plug them into a mixer and that's it. And almost anything will work. You could even adapt a dynamic microphone in a pinch to plug into, let's say, a guitar amplifier. A condenser microphone needs to have some outboard voltage. And there is a thing called phantom power. Sometimes if you're looking at a mixer or shopping for an audio interface, you'll say, oh, what's this button? Uh, reads plus 48, plus 48 volts or phantom power. So condenser microphones, in order to get that uh, energy, to get it converted into an electrical signal that gets into our computer or whatever, we then need a little bit of voltage called phantom power that is now going to basically uh, amplify that signal enough to get it uh, into whatever we're connecting it to. And uh, so that means not only are condenser microphones more complicated, not only are they more fragile, uh, they also require more uh, electronics in order to function. So at this point, you might be saying, well, why would I ever want a condenser microphone? Well, that thin capsule happens to be very good at certain things. And what they happen to be very good at is detail. Uh, on average, a very good condenser microphone will be able to record more detail uh, than even a very good dynamic microphone, all else being equal. Because the diaphragm has less mass, and so that means it can pick up nuance and detail in the way that a dynamic microphone cannot. So what would happen is, if you imagine the sound waves, that'll barely, uh, especially of a quiet signal or a subtle signal, the sound waves, that'll barely make that dynamic microphone coil uh, be disturbed. That'll be captured in tremendous detail. Let's say you had to capture the sound of quiet rainfall. A condenser microphone could do it beautifully, and uh, some dynamic microphones, they might not even really be able to reproduce that sound at all, or it would, wouldn't quite sound right. So, so the advantage of a large diaphragm condenser microphone is that it is both detailed and warm sounding. The drawback with them is, so, Typically, a large diaphragm microphone, we'll pretend this is one, will have to be addressed from the side, not from the top. And so you can imagine this capsule, this diaphragm is now sort of suspended inside the middle of the chassis. So even though it's still rated as being directional, much like a dynamic microphone potentially, uh, but you'll find that the back of the microphone uh, might still be quite sensitive, uh, relatively speaking. So now the quality of the room 
matters even much, much more to a condenser microphone than it matters with using a dynamic microphone. So that now might be one reason where you have to really consider, well, what is the right microphone for me? Uh, if you have a room that has been sound treated well, where there's not a lot of traffic noise, you might consider that a condenser microphone, despite potentially the additional cost and the additional things that you have to keep in mind, if the room sounds great, and it's a very quiet room, maybe it's worth exploring condenser microphones to see if one of those really matches your voice. But if you have a room that has a lot of background noise, you know, or maybe you can't turn off the, uh, uh, the air conditioner or the heating system, or there are cars going by, uh, or dogs barking, or who knows what all the time, uh, you may find that a strategically located dynamic microphone is your best bet. Condenser microphones also tend to be a bit more forgiving. You can still be up close. You'll definitely need a pop filter. But if you're, you know, if you vary a little bit in position, it's a little bit more forgiving because that diaphragm is definitely more sensitive and aware. They're also better at reproducing what are called transients. What's a transient? Well, uh, imagine it's that kind of blip. It's the beginning part of a sound wave. So if you imagine, let's say, if somebody was playing a trumpet or a flute, that first microsecond, you know, just that first little impact that makes you hear the beginning and the distinctiveness of that sound. If I clap my hands, that's a transient, that quick sound wave. And, or let's say if I'm using a consonant, that's a plosive, like a P or a T. Well, again, that definition that separates uh, words or, uh, you know, vowel syllables, um, transients are picked up more readily by a good condenser microphone than they are picked up by a dynamic mic. So hence, if we're using a dynamic mic, we're going to want to be very, very close to it and remain at a super consistent uh, distance and angle when we're addressing the microphone. With a condenser microphone, any microphone, you should still always strive to be consistent in your delivery, but it'll definitely be more detailed and it'll definitely be more uh, forgiving of slight movement, but the condenser microphone will be less forgiving in terms of background noise and idiosyncrasies uh, in and of the room. So uh, let's take a little break here. And if you have a question about condenser microphones uh, in general, uh, please let me know and then we'll continue. Great. Yeah, thanks for explaining all that. I think that's the first time I've ever understood the difference between uh, dynamic and condenser. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm still working on it myself sometimes, but yeah, no, yeah. thank you. Well, it also explains like uh, like doing some field recording stuff. I've used the Zoom's uh, field recorders before, and they worked really well, even though they're less expensive than this other dynamic microphone that I have. But they were able to the field recorder was able to pick up the the sounds of like birds, for instance, uh, much better than the dynamic microphone. So this explains yeah. it, I think. Exactly. Absolutely. Um, any questions from from folks uh, in the audience? Seeing none, let's uh, carry on. So now let's have a bit of fun and uh, let's look at some toys. So condenser microphone, dynamic microphone. So let's start figuring out after all that information overload, uh, let's start to figure out what kind of options you might consider and why. Now again, I don't believe in a one-size-fits-all approach. There are all kinds of great products in uh, on the market, and uh, ultimately, you have to like the result that you're getting. You have to enjoy what you're hearing uh, in the headphones. So I suppose I should suggest uh, my headphone preference very quickly tends to be something that is with closed cups. 
So you'll see with headphones, they're open, semi-open, closed. So closed cup, well, it just means it's a solid cup. Semi-open or open, you'll have little perforations to let sound uh, in and out more. It's just a different design. Those are more for audiophile uh, listening. But to me, if you're doing studio production and you want to monitor what you're uh, recording or streaming very accurately, uh, it's good to disconnect yourself from the sound of the room as much as you can. So closed headphones are a great choice and sometimes you'll you'll see labels on them too in addition to closed like uh, circum oral or supra oral well basically uh, supra just means that they're going to sit on your ear they'll have a smaller cup and circum oral just kind of means that they're going around the ear so these are closed cup uh, around the ear headphones and again if you have glasses a bigger head smaller head again don't really trust necessarily when somebody says oh these are the perfect headphones well they might be ideal for the shape of their head but maybe they're not ideal for you one of the things that's often overlooked very quickly with headphones is the weight i can't stand wearing super heavy headphones for a long time so comfort and sound quality uh, durability i like headphones where i can replace the cable quickly and simply as well so just a side note good headphones are important as well but let's talk about now picking a microphone so this here this is a dynamic microphone this is from sure there's a very expensive well, relatively expensive uh, microphone that's kind of the, the holy grail for a lot of podcasting people called the sure sm7b it's about a 550 dollar microphone and then it still requires some kind of USB interface to actually get it into your computer. And um, what they put out a little while back was now another microphone based on that design. But this is called the MV7. And this is really cool. So I like a setup that can kind of grow with me as my needs grow without having to throw out the baby with the bathwater every time. So this is a dynamic microphone. So I'm going to be talking into it like this. Not like this, not like this. I'm hardly going to get picked up. So I need to be pretty close to this mic. And you can see the capsule is offset a little bit uh, because this um, uh, foam pop filter is pretty, pretty thick anyway. So this is a dynamic microphone. So I can be right up close. It's going to avoid a lot of the room and background sound. And I'll make sure to include a short sound sample of all of these microphones. But the really cool thing is the back of this mic. So you can see the standard three-prong XLR microphone connector here for running this into a mixer or audio interface that we'll see. But hopefully you can see it's also got a micro USB connector. So the really cool thing with this microphone is if you just need one for the time being and you want to use it either with a laptop or maybe a tablet or maybe with a, a phone at times, uh, this can kind of do it all. It's actually got a USB built in when you want to use it directly without an outboard interface or mixer. But then if you have a, an audio interface or mixer already, you can use it as well. Or maybe you're going to start off doing things just by yourself, but then you want to expand the setup and have another person plug into an audio interface and to use two mics or three mics. Well, you will still be able to use this microphone. So it can be USB, digital already, or analog connections as well. So cool microphone, certainly. Next up, well, we have something like the Zoom H1N Handy Recorder. Now, Zoom has a whole bunch of these, and this is the smallest and most affordable. So it's very popular. It's about $150, roughly, give or take. It has two condenser microphones built in. It likes to record in stereo. Now, it's uh, is it the absolute ideal microphone slash recorder if you're doing only spoken word? Well, no. I mean, if money was no object, we would get a large diaphragm uh, condenser microphone as opposed to a pair of small diaphragm ones. But the package is so easy to use and so remarkable that for that price range, uh, it's hard not to uh, recommend it. It's very easy to set. We've got a little dial and screen here for setting how loud it is. I'm, I'm adjusting my gain and uh, I can record directly onto a micro SD card if I want and just take this thing anywhere and record with it. 
I can essentially put, this isn't the right one, but we'll make it work. You know, I can put a pop filter on top of this and kind of even use it interview style, uh, really cool. But in addition to recording directly onto this recorder, uh, I can also using, again, the micro USB port, uh, I can use this as a USB microphone with my computer or with the right adapter, my iPhone, iPad, or whatever as well. So it's really, really brilliant. And the recording quality for about 150 bucks really is uh, stunning. So this is an awesome little uh, studio in your hand. So I really like this product. Next up, we have another very interesting uh, USB microphone. This is from AKG. Uh, AKG is one of the oldest microphone manufacturers uh, on the planet and uh, they're from Austria originally and they make a lot of great quality headphones and microphones. They don't make a ton of USB microphones and this is a pretty new model and uh, I feel like they kind of hit it out of the ballpark with this particular one. I mean I like the look. Can I remove it from this stand or put it on a more conventional stand? Sure can. Uh, it actually has several different capsules built in, so it can record from the front, the front and the back, kind of interview style. It can also do a very tight or a very narrow stereo. So if there were two of us sitting on a sofa, let's say side by side, it could do that. If we're across each other from a desk, it can do that. If it's just me, uh, it can do that. So you can adjust the gain, how loud or quiet the signal is very easily with this particular microphone. And on the bottom, we have a USB-C port and a headphone jack for monitoring. And again, this can be used with your computer, with your Android or iOS device. So it's a, a pretty cool condenser microphone. So then otherwise, so these are all kind of USB friendly devices. But what happens if you already have a mic or maybe you think, no, I want to do it, you know, kind of the more old fashioned way. I'm going to use the, you know, the three prong industry standard XLR microphone plug. And I want to kind of build up my setup around that. Or maybe you have your heart set on a microphone that doesn't have USB built in. So whatever it is, we now need to get a mixer or audio interface, a preamp, lots of different ways of describing it. But basically we need something that can go from the microphone connection to a USB connection. Although depending on the interface, you get some really fancy ones like this one. Uh, this is an Aero from Universal Audio, has probably some of the best microphone preamps on the planet for interfaces. This uses Thunderbolt 3. So that could be another whole conversation, making sure that the interface you're looking at or that you need will hook up the, to the device that you're using. And again, Mac, Windows, uh, Android, iOS, there are some products work with everything or almost everything, and some products only work with something here and there. So it's important to look into the compatibility, but we're really just interested in the microphones today. So this particular audio interface, the Complete Audio One from Native Instruments, has one XLR microphone plug. And could I use a dynamic microphone? Well, yes, as we said, dynamic microphones, pretty much any mic input with gain, and we can use a dynamic microphone. Could I use a condenser microphone? Well, only if this audio interface has phantom power. Now, the good news is there's a button right on top here, and that is the phantom power button. So with this interface, I could plug in uh, any condenser microphone or any dynamic microphone. So quite, uh, quite handy if you just need one particular connection. Uh, I also do happen to have a headphone connection so I can monitor what I'm doing and I can record my microphone. Now, bonus points. Technically, I could actually use this with two microphones as long as only one of them was a condenser. The condenser microphone needs phantom power. Input one has that. The funny thing is input two could be set up for line or instrument, but with the right cable, even this um, quarter inch connector, which is like what's on a guitar amp, in a pinch, 
I could actually have a dynamic mic here and adapt another dynamic mic to be here. Or if I need phantom power on a condenser mic, that'll only be on the three prong jack. But I could kind of squeeze in a uh, dynamic microphone into the second input. So this is about $139 audio interface, great for getting started. And then the bigger brother of something like this, which will typically be in the two or $250 mark, will then typically have two of these jacks, both with phantom power. In my opinion, if uh, a USB audio interface or USB mixer does not have phantom power, uh, just don't bother buying it. It's never financially worthwhile adding it because then you have to buy a box and another cable. It's ridiculous. So if you're going shopping for an audio interface and you want to do things in the conventional kind of wired up way, that's great. Just make sure that you get an interface that has phantom power. Very quickly, I'll show it again. This is one of my uh, favorites. This is a universal audio product and uh, very simple and this is just really high grade you can use virtually any microphone uh, be they the most gain hungry dynamic microphones be they the most um, high output condenser microphones these two preamps can handle pretty much anything and uh, again this one here now needs thunderbolt 3 so you really have to always watch what you're buying well the interface that i'm getting marry up with the computer or other device that I'm using. So for example, basically no tablet or phone has a Thunderbolt 3 port. So this will really only work on the right kind of Mac or PC. Whereas products like this or products like the Zoom Handy Recorder or the AKG Lyra uh, can be made to work on almost any device. So these are decisions to really factor in. Finally, the last thing I want to mention is that for podcasting, uh, Zoom, that also makes the handy recorder, has also developed this and the bigger brother. So this here is the PodTrack P4. You'll notice on the back, it's actually got four microphone plugs and it actually has four headphone plugs as well. And this would be Kind of a really neat thing if you want to have a round table kind of setup where you could have up to four people on microphones uh, everybody with their own headphones uh, you could record directly into the uh, unit itself it actually has an sd card slot right there and it can actually be very portable and run off batteries but because we also do have a usb port i can also hook this up to my uh, computer and this could then record a stream of um, up to four mics now the four channels don't remain separate they kind of go down to one stereo track but typically that's perfectly fine and acceptable i've also got these little sound pads so if my show has little intro um, sound clips and the you know the show theme or whatever i can even trigger those by uh, pushing that button so uh, this is uh, kind of a, a really neat little thing too. So the point is uh, there are an incredible number of options and it can seem a little bit overwhelming at first perhaps but you know frankly uh, first of all if you're shopping locally we're always here to, and, and happy to help you with your questions. So my advice is you know uh, don't be in a rush. Find a product that works with the workflow that you need you know and uh, you know, make sure that you think about where am I recording? What am I recording? Does a dynamic mic make sense? And does a condenser microphone make sense? And, you know, really ultimately uh, try a couple of microphones, you know, even with COVID, well, we're going to be wearing our masks anyway. And uh, just like a built-in pop filter, I guess that's one kind of uh, uh, beneficial side effect. And, you know, ultimately get out there, try a couple of microphones, see what they sound like, and come up with something that uh, works for you. You know, think about the format of the show that you're putting out, of the podcast that you're putting out. You know, will you be happy with one microphone? Do you need a couple? Is your computer in good shape? Do you want to record it directly onto a phone or some other device? And, um, you know, but the good thing is a good microphone will last you for a long time. Uh, phones and computers and other things tend to go out of date far more quickly. 
And in fact, in a high-end studio, it's not even uncommon to see a 20, 30, or 40-year-old microphone, uh, whereas, you know, uh, they're not going to be running on a 20-year-old computer, typically. So invest wisely, uh, but at the same time, you know, again, you don't have to spend thousands of dollars to get good results. So thank you so much for joining me. I am going to record a couple of sound clips that uh, at least you'll be able to get a chance to hear what the microphones might sound like on my voice in my particular room. So thank you again. I'm Marcus Marr from Mars Music, and I'll be standing by for a few more questions. Thanks again. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. The birch canoe slid on the smooth planks. Glue the sheet to the dark blue background. It's easy to tell the depth of a well. Well, great. Well, that was a, an amazing presentation. Thanks, Marcus, for taking us through all those different aspects of, of microphones. I, I, I think I at least understand a lot more uh, about it now. And we have time for questions if folks didn't, uh, if folks want to clarify anything or ask about their own situation. Um, raise your hand to uh, let me know that you want your microphone enabled. Um, but yeah, so we've got some time for questions. If, uh, if anyone has, I, uh, I've also got, uh, Marcus is joining us by phone. Um, so you can't really see us, but I've also got my bucket of gear out. And so I, if you, there's anything you want to bring up and, and show a visual of, I can try and see if I have something to show Marcus. <laughs> but I see you've got the, the so-called dead cat there. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to ask, uh, if you wanted to go through, what are the different, um, benefits to, to like the kind of covers for microphones. I've got this kind of foam one versus a dead cat versus a pop filter. Um, yeah, and that's great. And uh, I mean, certainly, I think the first thing we can probably all agree on is that uh, having a pop filter uh, is definitely a sort of standard uh, issue and, and a definite requirement. It's one of the easiest ways to improve the sound quality, because now that we understand that mic, you know, being a small speaker or uh, like in a condenser mic like that shotgun there, a um, there's a very thin membrane, that diaphragm, right? When you're saying your P's and your T's, it's, it's like that gust of air is like punching that diaphragm. And that's when we get that that popping plosive. And that's what that pop filter is, uh, is for. And... Uh, so, and in fact, a lot of the time these days, because of, of course, with COVID, hygiene is becoming even more of a factor. Although, frankly, I always thought sharing pop filters was kind of, you know, nasty, to be perfectly honest. But a lot of the ones we have now actually have uh, a wire mesh on them instead of the nylon. So the nice thing is it's kind of easy to, you know, spray clean or put alcohol on that. And, uh, and um, so I'm quite a fan of those. And a lot of the old school ones used to be like that the the furry one you've got the so-called dead cat which is kind of awful but <laughs> um i mean that's you know typically you'll find that on shotgun microphones like the one you've got uh there and you know for outdoor use in particular they tend to be absolutely uh, indispensable typically not as much indoors but if you have that mic on a boom pole where you're moving it around it's definitely still useful uh indoors right which is pretty awesome, you know, and, and the foam stuff, as you said there, you know, to me, that's always the great thing about that is, does it work? Well, sure, it works and it's inexpensive and that's kind of a, a good thing about it. But uh, I tend to find for my, you know, estimation, it's sort of like the, the least effective, but it's by far better than, by far better than nothing. Definitely. And if people want to hear it, I've got the foam on my microphone right now versus... with the pop filter versus mm -hmm. with the dead cat. And this is what I sound like with the dead cat. So I don't know if you can hear the differences between them. They might be fairly subtle, but uh, yeah. 
Yeah, definitely fairly subtle. And my compliments on your, your microphone technique that's very consistent. <laughs> um, yeah, and um, oh, I had another question, but I forgot what it was. But um, yeah, I, I totally agree on the pop filter recommendation. Um, it's kind of like, there's like 20 bucks generally. And um, y yeah, they're, they're like instant way to up your game. Because like if I say Peter Piper picked a peck of pickled peppers, <laughs> it probably it didn't make a lot of ton, ton of uh, oh. uh, plosives there. But if I take it away, Peter Piper picked a peck of pipple, pickled peppers. Um, mm -hmm. I think you can hear a little bit there, the, the distortions uh, that come out when I... When the, there's a little gust of air that comes out when you say P sounds. Yeah, exactly. And then on top of that, and, and now try to listen to that for 15 minutes and yeah. it starts to get there. So yeah, definitely. Although the funny thing is too, with, with that particular microphone, it's, I mean, it's a good choice because that's now such a tight pattern. That's now a very directional microphone that you've got mm -hmm. there. Yep. But it's uh, quite neat. And funny uh, side note, whenever I see that, I always think of... Uh, big time movie voiceovers as well. One of the most common types of microphones used for like those huge sounding action film voiceovers would be one like that one. Oh yeah. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, there's, um, I forget his last name, but his, his, he was called the voice of God. And, uh, <laughs> you know, and, uh, and that was it. That was kind of his secret, a Sennheiser shotgun microphone in the studio. And you could get every action movie uh, voiceover ever made with that. I I always think of these and uh, I'll, I'll tell people about when talking about microphone technique, but like talking about like war correspondence, um, if they've got like explosions in the background and, yep. you know, chaos behind them, uh, they'll use a shotgun microphone like this because it's super, um, yep. super directional and mm -hmm. they'll like have it right up against their mouth uh, with the gain turned pretty far down and they'll still be yep. yelling into it, but it's to try and uh, minimize the background sounds. Yeah, you know, and that's that's actually it makes me wish I had had one as an example. Uh, I have to do that next time because, yeah, you're right. It's uh, it, and that shows you how selective or or not selective microphones can be. You know, and because uh, like I said, that's that's extremely directional. Hence the name shotgun uh, pattern and whatnot. And that's just a great example of taking advantages of the idiosyncrasies of the microphone pattern and making it work for you. You know, for certain things, if you're trying to pick up a choir, that would be totally the wrong one because it would sound like one singer might have been dominating even when they weren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I used this once for a field recording as well, and it was it worked okay, but you don't really get the sense of the whole space around you because it's so directional. Like I could pick up the sound of one single bird quite well, depending on how far away it was, but um, the whole space was kind of lost. Yeah, right. Whereas the built-in microphones, even on a hundred and fifty dollar Zoom recorder, might have been superior for that. So. Yeah. And I think it's kind of one of those other wonderful things to touch upon. Again, you know, a microphone is like a tool and it's like, what kind of knife should you use? Well, are you cutting bread, a, a tomato or putting butter on something, right? Might be three different knives, ideally, and microphones can be like that as well. Mm -hmm. um, for folks who, who maybe don't have much of a budget to spend on a microphone, is there any, um, are, are there any tips for using something like a built-in microphone on a phone or a computer that you can give? Well, you know, it's, it's uh, you know, jokingly, it's kind of bad for business. But, uh, you know, these days, because uh, a lot of the time phones actually have incredibly sophisticated condenser microphone arrays built in. So, again, there'll be condensers. And there's a lot of this, this really neat noise canceling technology and, and things like that built in. So, to me, the trick on a phone or laptop is to find the sweet spot. You know, so you might, and of course, the tricky part is sometimes the sweet spot for the camera and for the microphone are not the same sweet spot, unfortunately. But if you're concerned mostly about audio, again, I would say no different than any other microphone. Go to different parts of the room, uh, try to do a recording, uh, make sure that you're really aware of where the microphone happens to be on your particular device, you know, turn it towards the wall, turn it away from the wall, you know, have it kind of sitting on a, on a, on a shoe box on the sofa with a lot of soft sound absorption absorbing material behind it, right, or whatever, and then kind of just figure out where that device will sound uh, best. Because again, if you're in the kitchen or the bathroom or uh, in the living room, it's going to be dramatically different. You could open up a closet that you have a lot of clothes in and then, you know, have your back to that or have the back or, or be talking into it and again and just see where it sounds best. That's my advice. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I think no matter what you're using, as long as you're comfortable with it and kind of try and get a working understand of, understanding of it, at least, is uh, the best thing you can do regardless of what your tools are. You know, and it's, it's actually a great point that you make, though, in even the built-in, we shouldn't really talk about them badly. The stuff built into laptops or phones today, I can tell you 20 years ago, people would have been happy if they spent $400 and it sounded as good as that. And yeah. gener generally, it didn't. For sure. Um, I, I remember the thing I was going to say before as well. I, I remember one time I was out um, interviewing people at a protest and I forgot my my windsock. So mm. I stopped at a, at a dollar store and I bought a... A, a dish rag and I used a hair elastic to tape it around the top of it just to kind of get rid of the wind sounds and the popping peas and uh, it worked all right <laughs> so you can also engineer your own little pop filters in a pinch uh, absolutely in the old days for me it used to be and my mom was not happy but uh, it would be uh, missing nylons and coat hangers yeah totally <laughs> um any questions from folks um I know uh, one of the attendees, Marisol, you're in the market for a new microphone uh, and a new new pair of headphones as well. Um, I don't know if you want to hop on the voice line and, and talk about your situation. Um, maybe I'll just enable you to speak, but don't feel any pressure to do so if you don't want to. You, you'll still be able to uh, unmute yourself if you uh, if you want to. Hello. No, no, no. I'm, thank you for inviting me to speak. Um, thank you to the speaker to, for, for that information. I, I, yes, I was actually looking for something that um, it's not that uh, budget. <laughs> like it's inside of my budget that it's not that costly. I'm just starting. So I don't have like I, there. I was trying to do the, you know, looking into all the stores online and see the um the, the feedback from customers, like looking at that, but it's so confusing. Everybody defends their own um, their own tech, depending on their needs. And my needs, for example, are, are, are very basic. I just want something comfortable that is not too expensive and that I can use without having to um, rely on connecting on the electricity or or maybe I can like, you know, it's, but I, all my questions were answered with the. <laughs> with well, this, this that, that's very, thank you. Well, I mean, have you got a, an approximate budget in mind? What would you, and what are you trying to record? What, what's the, um, what's the project? Well, it's it, it, for my podcast, I use Zoom a lot in terms of introducing uh, speakers, but I do have to work in a very noisy environment with my kids. So mm -hmm. I'm looking for something that is able to like cancel the noise. But mm -hmm. at the same time, um, and also maybe um, I know this when editing sound, I can see how my voice can be like very high, like I don't know something that I, it's, it's, it has a filter, so I can have um, you know like that, so my voice is clearer. Um, mm -hmm. Many things. <laughs> I, I just I was just looking for like what is the the most, let's say um, the the cheapest for somebody who's starting and wants something that is a good, sort of like a good quality, you know, like something that is not <laughs> that bad. Certainly. Are, are you gonna be using it on a phone or a laptop or something That's else? That's the thing, I want that versatility. I want it to be able to connect it to my phone and my laptop. Um, so, and, and to be able to go with me on the, uh, uh, like on, if I have to interview somebody outside and I, don't, I can't bring my laptop and I need the phone there, um, that's why, like, it's it's more about mobility and and adaptiveness than than really uh, being super sophisticated. Totally. Well, I mean, I, I have to admit, I mean, uh, you know, when you can justify it, probably that little Zoom handy recorder, that Zoom H1N, probably would be the one to work up to because it can work. It can do recording. If you have a phone, if you don't have a phone or a laptop, but right, it can interface with them, but you can also use it by itself and then upload the recording uh, later. I have to admit that's probably the, the it's probably the the one that would give you the best results mm -hmm. overall. And, you know, and then you would have to kind of grow the setup from there. But I think that would be the best choice. 
that's what I thought from the from the webinar. So thank you so much. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. Yeah. Time and you know, feel free to come in sometime, and uh, you know, because then we would do exactly what I suggested. Now you can just try a couple with your voice, and if you have your own headphones that you're going to be using, please bring them. You know, both for hygiene these days and safety, and also mm -hmm. so, because you're used to hearing those headphones. So then, when you hear the recording that we do or the microphone, we try. Hopefully, you can evaluate to you know mm -hmm. uh, to see if it works for you. Thank you. My pleasure. I also just wanted to show, um, I have the a different version of the Zoom Handy Recorder, but it has a nice little spot in the bottom where you can put a tripod in. Um, and it's a pretty standard, um, I don't know, a fitting for it, I guess. So it works with a whole bunch of different tripods. So I, I really, I like that feature about it because it means I can bring a stand and not have to hold it all the time and I can set it up right nice and close or between us. Um, so I just thought I'd mention that. Yeah, and that's a great th thing. And in fact, a good point that basically all of the Zoom Handy recorders, yeah, it's that, it's that standard kind of tripod type mount thread. So they generally all have that. And then the cool thing is we even carry the adapter for that to attach to a mic stand. So you don't, you don't even oh, have nice. to have a tripod. So really, again, in the real world, so I, and I, I like that flavor that I'm getting from, uh, from you and from the person I was just chatting with, you know, there's always like the real world, right? And you just have to make it... Uh, work. So we always try to have those adapters, right? It's okay. You need to use it on a mic stand. There it is. You need to, you have an old tripod lying around. Perfect. And that's very important to be adaptable and, uh, and mobile. So, but you're right. That zoom is all those zooms are, well, you know, it's a good, good name, a handy recorder. They, they really are. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thanks for hopping on the voice line, Mary Saul and asking a couple questions. Um, and thank you, Marcus, for being here for this. I think we'll wrap up unless we get any questions in the next, you know, 20 seconds or so. But um, yeah, this was a great rundown of, of of how microphones work and how to pick the best one for you. So thanks so much. And no, uh, pleasure. Yeah. No, thanks. And uh, yeah, you're uh, available to do this one on one at Mars Music. Um, so check them out online and in store. And um, We'll just wrap it up there. Thanks, everybody, for coming. And thanks, Marcus, for being here. Yep. Thanks. My pleasure. Anytime. And uh, thanks, everyone else, for listening and for your time as well. Oh, my pleasure.